Hi friend, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another day in the life as I work from home, stay at home mom. Today, I have an in-person meeting and I love the company that I work for because instead of trying to figure out childcare, we're just gonna have the meeting here. And so I decided that I would make a little pastry for us to have during our meeting. So I've made this before. It's so good, but it's also so simple. I'm using canned cinnamon rolls. Hold please. Canned cinnamon rolls. You cut them up into little pieces and I'll actually just show you, but basically you coat them in cinnamon, sugar, and butter. Put them in a bread baking pit tin, bake it, and put the icing on. It's so simple, but it's so good. Do you pop side? I swear, the living creatures in my house see me pull out a camera or a phone and all starts going crazy. In fact, also, I should put a disclaimer. If you think I'm ignoring my child in the background, that's not my child. It's just my fur child. The cat somehow sounds like my toddler more often than I care to admit that I'm like waking up in the middle of the night or in the middle of doing something when my son is napping and I have to like stop and think real hard for a second. I'm like, is that my child or was that the cat? I don't know if that's normal for a cat to sound like a child, but my cat sounds like a child. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and make this pull apart bread and get the day started. And yeah, it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> I feel like I was just a Sims. That was like loading. I don't know what just happened to my brain right there, but I still don't really know what I'm trying to accomplish at this exact moment. I'm gonna try that again. That was not great. That was real close. I originally pulled this out. That's cumin. <laughs> that would not be very delicious. Okay, one of my favorite things that I've learned in baking recently is, you know how when you like grease a pan, you usually use like butter and flour and you like shake it all around and then when you pull the baked good out, it looks a little bit splashy, not great, not real attractive. I don't even know where, I don't know if I learned this somewhere or if I thought to try it on my own or what the circumstances were, but it, I initially tried it when I was making banana bread and now I don't know that I'll do baked goods any differently. So you do the same thing, you line your pan with butter as you normally would. Get all the sides, the end, like the corners, the bottom, all of those things, right? Totally normal exactly what you know to do. Get that real greased up. And instead of shaking flour, shake sugar on it. So not only does it create like a barrier so it slips out real easily, the sugar like crystallizes to your baked good and adds such a delectable crust. It's unreal. It just mm, like up levels, like pop, pop. Oh, it's so good. But additionally, when you pop your baked good out, there's no like unsightly splotchiness. So I don't know that I'll ever bake any differently than that. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know if there's a reason why you shouldn't do it. I haven't found that reason, so I do it. I'm just lining it. I'm gonna do the service thing. Okay, and as you can see, it's just nicely coated. And now I'm just gonna pop this cinnamon sugar coated pieces 
in here. I am gonna just pop that in the fridge and let it hang out because I will put that in the oven probably like 20, 30 minutes before our meeting starts. And then that way, one, it'll make my house smell really yummy when they arrive, but also it'll be nice and fresh, which I mean, is there anything better? Is there anything better than a fresh made cinnamon pull apart bread on a Monday morning to start the work week? I don't think so. Such a silly little thing, but so fun. Now I'm just going to very quickly clean up and I'm going to actually start on some work. And then that way, once my meeting is over, I can kind of focus on the kiddo for the day. I think I've mentioned, I don't know that I have. So if I haven't, the last several months I've been feeling like a little, a little low vibey, which is not really my MO. I'm usually a very happy, joyful kind of person and the vibes they've been low lately and i like tap into my inner emo teenager when i'm feeling that way and listen to like all kinds of sad sappy songs that just kind of reinforce the low vibes which don't get me wrong there's definitely a time and place for that like i remember especially as a teenager just like wallowing on my carpet journaling crying listening to all the sad music and there's something very cathartic about that we've all been for long drives blasting the songs that just kind of let all the emotions out but i'm sick of feeling low vibe <laughs> very sick of feeling low vibe so i created a playlist that i actually titled shake it out because if you've ever watched Grey's anatomy you know then that like meredith gray and christina yang used to like dance it out whenever they were having like a funky mood but there's actual like scientific proof that like shaking your nervous system actually helps elevate your vibe and like release those like pent-up emotions and i was like "Ooh, what songs could like help me get the shake it out vibes and so i created a playlist i'll actually link it down below it's kind of embarrassing i don't really care but I've made a point to like listen to that kind of music when I'm doing chores or just kind of hanging out to try to like keep my vibes going. I'm not always shaking it out, but it's like rattling my nervous system in a good way. And so I want to pop that in my ears while I'm getting this stuff cleaned up. And yeah, if you're just like feeling a little low vibey, try it out because it actually is more beneficial than you realize. And it really does make a difference. copyrighted for the music in the background, but my son is very into being his own DJ on Spotify right now. So that's what he's up to. I'm going to start preheating the oven to put our little cinnamon pull apart bread in. I do, however, need to look up the temperature and my son has my phone. So hold on. Okay. This says 400 degrees and bake for 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm going to let that preheat and then We'll put her in. This is smelling so good. Also, if you don't have one of those liners in your oven, also, yes, I need to clean my oven. Don't judge. But I swear, having one of those liners in my oven makes all the difference in the world. We put it in like the day we brought this oven home and it's so easy to wipe clean. It's so easy to wipe clean. I just wiped it off just now. We do pizza on Fridays and obviously the best way to cook a thin crust pizza is directly on the rack and so, we get like, you know, spillage, sauce, cheese, pepperoni, whatever, kind of like slips off. And yeah, it's so easy to clean. But anyway, it's smelling rather delicious in here. In unfortunate news, uh, my bank card was compromised. So I've just spent the last little while on the phone with the bank, canceling my credit card, or to my debit card, which is unfortunate. And someone had a bit of a shopping spree on Etsy and Timu. And I love my husband who knows well enough to know. He saw Timu on there and he was like, hey, uh, is this you? I'm like, no, no, it's not. Because he knows me well enough to know that the reckless spending is not really my MO. So 
Glad he caught that. Glad the bank is going to take care of it. If you don't bank with a credit union, you should bank with a credit union because they're so fantastic to work with. I realized that this little like jacket shirt thing doesn't really match, but I wanted to feel cozy. Okay, can you please go sit down? The, the getting the toddler to sit at the table to eat his food has been a challenge. Do you guys have recommendations for that? Because it seems it's a universal problem for the most part because I do see memes on TikTok or like Instagram that are like, why does a toddler have to take a bite and then do a backflip? But that's my life. That's my life. The toddler does not really like to sit down to eat his meal. But we have dogs who will eat his food. If he's walking around with his food in his hand, food stays at the table. You can get up and move around, but food stays at the table. Can you please put your food at the table? Food stays at the table. Food stays at the table. It's a repeated thing all the time. No more bar. You have pancakes and sausage on the table. Okay, these are all done. How delicious that looks. I'm just gonna put the frosting on it. Strawberries? Okay, I'll be easy. Probably it for right now because I don't think I will be whipping out my camera when I'm in the middle of my meeting but I will definitely give you a report on how it tastes I've made this before so I know it's really good but all right I have a feeling that my meeting is gonna start any minute meeting is over and the pull apart bread was a hit so good it's so easy to make it's so easy and it's such a crowd pleaser so if you have something where you feel like you need to bring like a little pastry dish go ahead and bring that for sure, very delicious. Highly recommend, always needs more more frosting. So I'm gonna see next time if I can make like my own frosting for it. Never really done that before. I feel like that's gotta be like a combination of what, like cream cheese, powdered sugar, maybe just water. Maybe it's just water, powdered sugar, and cream cheese, and maybe vanilla. I should just look up a recipe is what I should do. But right now, the toddler is eating some lunch. He's not at the table at the moment. He is in the loo, but he is having leftover meatballs, leftover tater tots, and strawberries with some milk. And I'm gonna get him some stories and get him down for nap. And then once he's down, I'm gonna dive into some of like my work and kind of get focused on that for the rest of today. And then I don't really know what we're gonna get up to this afternoon, but I also need to figure out what I'm gonna eat for lunch. But I have a lot of choices because I did the same thing this week that I did last week where I batch cooked most of our dinners for the week or at least prepped most of our dinners for the week yesterday. And so now not only does it eliminate like the act of prepping do like the food, it also eliminated the cleanup, which I much, much appreciated. So if you are struggling with that like post-nap to dinner, bath, and bedtime window of time like I have been, try prepping your food for the week on Sunday. It really made just such a huge, like huge, huge difference. And then also it prevented us from having that like spiral where you're like, oh, whatever, I'm just gonna go get fast food or oh, whatever, because we can't really afford to do that right now. I don't know that a lot of people can afford to do that right now. Things are so expensive. Like every dollar right now is accounted for. So definitely recommend batch cooking if you aren't already. I guess I could share what I've made, hold on. Okay, so the stuff that I have prepped is I made like my taco mixture, which is taco meat mixed with, um, enchilada sauce and refried beans. It's so good. It comes from a Michaela Thomas recipe where she turns that into like low carb um, enchiladas, which are really good. But I've since kind of like taken the mixture and added it to a whole bunch of things. Sometimes I eat it as a taco bowl. Sometimes I eat it as nachos. Sometimes it's a burrito. Um, and I'm planning this week to use that as the filling for taco roll-ups, which is, I'm planning to use those zero carb, little mission zero carb tortillas 
and throwing a little bit of queso in it or cheese in it, rolling it up, putting it in the air fryer for four minutes at 400 and then having queso to dip in. So, cause even the toddler will eat that, so yummy. And then I also took out the avocado and the salmon to have salmon bowls this week. So I went ahead and made the rice. I went ahead and steamed the edamame. So that'll just have to be heated up. And then salmon cooks so quickly in the air fryer that I figured I would just leave that for the day of because nothing beats like a fresh cooked salmon. Reheated salmon, not really the best thing in the world. So that is on the, the docket. I did make the grilled chicken again. So salads, quesadillas, sandwiches, rice bowls, just plain old rice and veggies or some kind of side and veggies could be used with it. And then last night we had ravioli and meatballs. And so now I have leftovers of both of those things that can be utilized in a number of different ways. But that's food for the week sorted. And now that I've just talked about that, I'm hungry for lunch. So I guess I gotta figure out what I'm gonna eat for lunch. And then I need to check on the kiddo. Hey bud, are you all done? If you've got a potty trained toddler, I'm curious if you've entered the stage where you help them get into the bathroom and then they immediately tell you to leave. Immediately tell you to leave. I'm like, okay. But then when I go to the bathroom, I don't get that same privacy. Hey, what you doing? try to go somewhere. Yeah, that's for mommy's work. Can you hand it to me, please? Thank you. We try to usually go somewhere in the afternoons just to try to eat up the time, but he really wanted to play outside. You want to listen to Blippi music? Yeah. Okay, we can put Blippi music on. But anyway, he really wanted to stay. He calls it big outside. It's our backyard, which is actually a very nice backyard. We just don't utilize it as much as one should mainly because I'm usually eager to just get out of the house and get moving in the afternoons again, just to eat it up. But there is something really nice to still just being in our own house. Wait, can you shut the door please? So while he plays, I'm gonna work on the book a little bit. This happens every time and I really gotta get better about like breaking patterns that I get myself into. And I've been doing a lot of like consumption around like neuroplasticity and changing habits and changing that like inner story you tell yourself. And so cognitively, Ow. I understand it. That's wrong. But as far as like changing it or being able to like be mindful of it or all of those things, I struggle a little bit. Because we wouldn't get stuck in them if they weren't patterns we were stuck in. Like if it wasn't just what our natural default returns to every time. But basically what happens is as I get to the very end of a book, I freak myself out and then I don't finish it. And then I get like a wave of motivation. I finish it, then I panic that it's horrible. I go back and rip the whole thing to shreds, start again and like weave things in. I know this is part of my process and maybe that's just something I need to lean into, but damn is it annoying. It's very annoying to be like, I'm so close to the end, so much so in fact, that I've actually even like mapped out all of the final chapters and like what needs to happen in them, which I've never done before. Like I've never been that organized during a first draft. I've definitely done it like in phase two, never have I ever done it in draft one. And so I'm like, it should be so simple. <laughs> it should be so simple. But I did spend some time earlier today doing some work on Pinterest, which people ask a lot about like, how do I drive traffic to my blog? Cause I've had the blog for years and honestly, Pinterest. I mean, I do a lot of organic search, so I work really hard with keywords and SEO to make sure that I'm ranking on Google. I'm coming baby. Go ahead, I'll be there in a second. You can open the door, it's open. But aside from organic search, Pinterest. All kinds of Pinterest. So I already did probably about two hours worth of work on Pinterest. Now I'm gonna do about an hour of writing and then we're gonna call it a day because I've been working since 5 a.m., which is fine. We are now on a mission to find and pick up pine cones and put them in this bin. Oaken, are you helping? No. You got pine cones? Yeah. Awesome. So if you ever need, go ahead, put them in the bin. If you ever need an activity, 
because he was just fighting on me from being outside, which is so crazy because he always wants to be big outside. But he heard a pine cone drop. Pop pine cones, good idea! He heard a pine cone drop and I was like, oh, I bet you there's a bunch in the backyard. And of course there are a bunch in the backyard because I live in North Carolina, in the woods of North Carolina. And so now we are picking up pine cones, which is fine with me because it gets steps in. Fine with him because it's an activity. The dog's happy because he has something to retrieve. Okay, don't mind me. I ended up on the emotional side of TikTok. My battery died in the middle of that workout and I'm gonna be really honest, it was an hour long workout and I bailed at like 40 minutes because it's been a minute and I need some time to regain my stamina. But while I was in the emotional side of TikTok, I came across something, hence the absolute sobbing tears. And I wanna share it with you because I don't know, honestly, I loved the infant period of being a parent. It was hard because I was working full time in an office. And my son was going to daycare full time and that's just hard in its own right. And I've always said my whole life, I nannied for years. Now like I just don't really do toddlers. Like toddlers are not my jam. They're hard, they're difficult, they're ornery. They're infuriating, adorable, and hilarious, but oh, they can just push buttons. And something about parenting a toddler for me has been really triggering. Um, and I've been to therapy and done the things. Probably need to go back. And I'm actually going to see my doctor on Friday to see about like adjusting the medication that I've been on since postpartum anxiety and depression kicked in right after I had my son. Well, that's not true actually. My postpartum anxiety and depression didn't kick in right after I had my son. It was confusing because it kicked in at five months, which I didn't realize was a possibility. I have a point, I promise I'm getting to it. But being a work from home, stay at home mom has been really challenging. And I've been trying really hard to be all the things and be fully present in every avenue of my life and still somehow take care of myself and not lose my mind on my kid and not, you know, scream until my voice is raw, which honestly has happened occasionally, but also like soak in those really silly moments that happen with a toddler, but also really throw myself into writing and really do a good job at my day job and all of it just feels kind of hard some days and lately it's felt hard and life in general has just felt hard. And so I wanna share this with you in case this is something that you have also been dealing with because I saw this and while this doesn't 100% relate to my situation, I feel like a lot of us could probably find something to resonate within it. So the account is Jessica your licks, I think I'll link it down below. It's a TikTok. It looks like it's from a book But I don't know what book it's from. So again, I'll just link the TikTok below. I'm gonna do my best to get through this. Okay <sighs> Blink and you'll miss it they say but I didn't miss it. I was there I was there placing you down to sleep on your back elbows in line with your shoulders hands at your ears I always wondered why tiny babies slept this way then you rolled and then you were sitting and now you are jumping from the coffee table to the couch. I was there through the tears of breastfeeding, pinching my leg or curling my toes. I wondered if I could do this again. Then one day we were in the kitchen, I was stirring dinner and you were feeding in my other arm and I smiled. How did we get here? I was there 
pacing the hallway, squinting my eyes shut, wishing the moment away, shattered beyond measure at the thought of another day of no sleep. I was there as you cuddled into me, as we surrendered to each other. I still envelop you into my arms, but you don't fold into me the same way when you tell me you're ready for your cot now. I was there as they placed you on my chest, never more alive, never more terrified, my world in my arms as I listened to those tiny squawks. And now you're saying things like, I don't want to, I love you, or go away, mommy. I don't remember when the nights got easier, but they did. Or when you stopped saying uggle instead of cuddle, or the moment I kissed those little feet and was greeted with sweat instead of your signature newborn scent. Oh, how I know I will miss this when I look through the rearview mirror. How I know that no matter how testing, memory lane will be tree-lined with nostalgia. Will I truly remember it as it was, or will I be trying to pin down a bubble? When do all the becomings become goings or gones? Blink and you'll miss it, they say. But we don't miss it. We miss saying goodbye to it. That got me. That <laughs> got me. Oh, that got me. And maybe it got you too. And I'm sorry if it made you cry, but it's been hard. <laughs> It's been hard, but it's the most wonderfully hard thing I've ever done. And I really want to keep the perspective of that, that how fortunate I am to be able to do all of the things. I mean, even just the fact that I had to have a meeting today and it wasn't even a question and it was actually even suggested or offered to come here for the meeting. And when they came, they had crayons and paper and snacks for my kid. That's the kind of company I work for. And if only I could go back to the mom I was in that first year postpartum, really struggling, like having a hard time because I wanted my job, but I also wanted to be a mom. And now I obviously didn't understand how hard it would be to be both at the same time. I'm so grateful that now I get to be both at the same time. So if you are also a work from home, stay at mom, home mom, or it's something you want to do, or maybe you're pregnant and you're considering doing it, it's so hard, don't get me wrong, it is so hard. But I don't know that there's any avenue of parenting and working or parenting and not working that's easier. I, and I don't mean that like, I don't think one has it easier than the other. I don't think one has it harder than the other. I think it all, I think it's all hard. <laughs> I think it's all hard, no matter the circumstances. So yeah, that was not intended to be part of this vlog, but I came across it. I wanted to share. And to be frank, I wanted to be honest and vulnerable and transparent in the fact that like, this is wonderful, but it is, it is super difficult. And I want to remember how wonderful it can be when it feels really hard. So anyway, I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm gonna, I'll get myself cleaned up. I'm gonna set my coffee pot for tomorrow and I'll meet you back here in just a hot minute to end up today's vlog. Okay, wiping the tears away now. All right, I think that's gonna do it for today. It was a very good day, despite being a very full and busy day. And I'm glad you guys got to hang out with me. Thank you for being here. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. I post new videos every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.